everybody. So I've never heard of Manic Man. Do you know anything oh, really? about it? Really? Mm -hmm. I, I just was, I was recommended it by the ref, actually. Um, oh, okay. You know, I was talking to one of the, the um, tequila reps one day, and I said, what's your favorite tequila? And they said this. I really enjoyed this one myself. Just by the nose, I can almost feel like there's additives, man, in this one. It's always possible with, um, you know, a lot of tequilas do have additives. Let me show you a way to tell if there's additives. Put a little bit on your finger, put some in your th in your palm, and you just rub it until it gets a little warm. And then it kind of evaporates, but if you feel stickiness, which I do, there's additives. Hmm. That's one way to tell with tequila if there's any type of additives in there. Just so Good you to know. know. I, you know, honestly, a lot of the ones um, that are commercially available, there's definitely additives in. Well, I mean, Don Julio. You got Patron um, Don Julio Patron. actually claims that they don't. Really? And they've talked to their okay. rep. I've talked to their direct rep about this because it's something that I heard of as well. And he's like, I've been to that distillery many, many times. I've never seen mm. an autoclave. I've never seen a diffuser. I've never seen them do any additives. If you look at the colors, so when it comes to tequila, you could easily tell by color if there's any type of additives. Like I mentioned before, I hope you can see this in the video real well, but this is an, an añejo. It looks very like bright yellow. Yep. And could that be the virgin oak versus bourbon barrel? No. I mean, honestly, probably virgin oak might, if it's toasted virgin oak, might impart more color than a bourbon barrel. Not at all. Because keep in mind, this has only been in there for a year. That's been in there for more than this a year. is tequila and bourbon's been in there for what four years, two, four years, and, and up. So they do add a little bit of a color to them. Um, look at the difference of this this color. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Definitely an additive in color. This is pretty, um, actually, it's pretty dark in color. <laughs> it is dark in color. I'm telling you, man. So, like, um, Felipe Camarena is one of my favorite master distillers. That dude is a purist. Anything that that man does is going to be 100% pure agave. You're not going to get no gimmick. You're not going to get no BS. It's going to be straight up what it is. His extra añejos look a little brighter, like a little lighter than this. You think you're drinking a reposado if you're going by color. It's yeah, crazy. This is pretty dark. I, I mean, it's over a year old. I could already smell year, that this but... is a French oak barrel. Does that say it on there? It doesn't, but when I looked it up online, it says it's bourbon barrels. Nah, this has to be French oak barrel, man. Maybe a little combination of both? Has to be. Yeah, they probably they probably aged it in American white oak barrel, which is an extra. A little, next. little uh, French oak finish. And then Give it their extra. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, this one for me is one that is um, not too expensive. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it, um, but I agree that many of the things that we've tasted today are better. Yeah, this is just a little bit sweeter. It's okay. I'm glad he actually has that because the next one we're going to try is going to be very similar. Hmm. You remember what you paid for that bottle? It was about 50. This is Don Pilar Extra Nijo, aged in American White Oak, finished in French, French Oak. Oak. Okay. So. And, and I really like the French Oak qualities you get off of some of the Maker's Blue Finishing Series. I have a... Um, but that Nulu. Nulu. The Nulu French Oak is really good. Um, I have several bourbons finished with French Oak that I really enjoy. Yeah, French Oak, I mean, Maker's 46 is like my yes, that's favorite right. one. Yeah. You know, but the difference in it is that to me, that French Oak on some tequilas, they really, they either add additives to it to make it sweeter. Or I don't this know. is really perfumey. It smells like peach. This to me is like, not like I'm sticking my nose in a bottle of perfume, but no, I'm like I know smelling, what you mean. I'm smelling faint There's, perfume off of somebody. Yeah. Like a gorgeous, yeah, said a that, gorgeous that. girl okay. is, is, is walked in the room and I'm, I'm smelling her perfume. I'm gonna keep my I mean, my gorgeous myself, wife man. has walked in the room and I'm smelling her perfume. See, the stickiness on this one is very little. Yeah. Just, a, just a touch. Very little on the sticky quality. Um, I legitimately think out of all the ones we've tasted so far, this might be the one I would recommend the most to a uh, bourbon fan. You're not going to get those high proof notes. You're not going to get those. You're not going to get that burn on the tip of your tongue. You're not going to get that super long finish that you get off of a barrel proof bourbon, but you're going to get quality bourbon flavors, bourbon notes in a different spirit. That's also giving you other flavors 
That that so far is the number one. Number one for our buddy here. Next up. The sticker on here uh, is a big deal, right? Yeah, so for those of you who actually follow Tequila, if you've ever heard of tequilamatchmaker.com, they have an app and they have become something pretty big on their own because they they have a list of tequilas on there. You With no additives, confirmed no additives. They'll, they'll say, tell you the whole thing, but they yeah. have anything that's confirmed that's no additives. Not to say that if you're not on the list, you don't have additives. Exactly. But if you don't have additives, or if you do have additives, you can't yeah. be on the list. So, so now you're getting these type of people that will get these stickers by them and they'll put it on their bottles. So yeah, they're being endorsed. That was a nice pop. That didn't want to give away. Small batch tequila. This stuff stays true to the craft. Cascanas is one of my yeah, I've, favorite I've brands. Yeah, I definitely had the Onyango um, at your birthday party. Your yeah. brother poured it for me at your birthday party. And uh, yeah, I uh, definitely liked the regular Onyango for sure. Yeah. Three-year-old. Oh, this is a, this is a, this is a funky nose. Yeah, so this is the number seven. The number, so they have a number seven, a number nine, and then they have a number 10. Uh, the number seven has, they have a silver that's very funky. Strawberry jam. Strawberry jam. I'd say more like pineapple. I could see pineapple, I also feel like figs. Mandarin, I see figs. Figs, it's so fruity. Yeah, I see fig. Um, like sandalwood? They actually have- This is a wild nose. I know. You should smell their hoven. It's like, it's very funky. It's almost like this a- It's like, like a Jamaican pot still rum. Like it's like, funky. A, it's, like, so you say that. So you, <laughs> where I was going with this is agricultural style rum. Okay. All right. Agricultural style rum is very funky. It has all these sim similar uh, notes in the nose and flavor. But the, the number nine that they have of an extra new home dying for that to arrive to Arizona. It's a hundred proof. Nice. Hundred proof. Their number nine blanco is one so, of my favorite tequilas. The other thing we're trying to tell you here is the bur the tequila industry has recognized that you might be interested and are upping the proof on a lot of stuff. So if you're getting into tequila now, you might learn that you can get some higher proof stuff. This is beautiful. This is really solid. This one, I definitely can tell I'm drinking tequila. There's a lot of that agave quality coming through here. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of a saltiness, um, but fruit, a lot of fruit going on on this yeah. one. This is, this, is a, this is a unique experience that I'm really enjoying. So for those who um, don't know, agave actually looks like a pineapple when you mm -hmm. pluck it out of the ground. They Look. call it a pineapple, right? Yeah, when it's called a piña. So mm -hmm. it's like maybe this big, this wide around. Mezcal on the other hand gets a little bit different, but... Yeah. Um, they um, they call it a piña, and it actually looks just like a pineapple. And then they chop it up, and then they throw it in the in the ovens to roast up. Then they'll throw it in a Tahona wheel circle to where they have a donkey, or they'll have something mechanically crushing with the Tahona wheel, which is a stone wheel to crush the agave and pull out extract all the fruits. This is one I would recommend to people who like rums too. This would be one that I would recommend to people who like. I don't care what you like, you drink this. Yeah, aged spirits <laughs> in general, but yeah, this has got those for me. I, and I, I will be freely on, free and honest here that I haven't had a ton of aged rums, but this is reminding me of some of those yep. funky Jamaican pot still rums yep. that I've tasted. Like once again, I haven't had a lot of them, but I, that's what it's reminding me of. Yeah, very fun. Very good. It's a, it's amazing. It's an amazing tequila. It's one of like I said, it's one of my favorite brands. I absolutely just love it. So what, what, what do we got here? So right there we have something out of Casa San Mateas. Um, this beautiful box right here. This looks expensive. It is. But I mean, honestly, this six-year-old. Six-year-old tequila. Tequila costs the same oh, you're as this, this three-year-old. No, I have not. If you don't want to open it tonight, you don't have to. No, okay. we're opening it okay. today. Okay, all right. So, um, Ooh, it's got a crystal decanter. Has a little crystal de uh, crystal decanter topper. This is a crystal bottle. Um, the guy who actually designed the bottle is Sergio Bustamante, who's a very famous Mexican artist. He designed the bottle. And beautiful uh, bottle. it's a beautiful bottle. So I mentioned earlier. Display does matter. I'm not saying that it's tremendous. 
but this right here is 260 at total wine and i'm doing it for 230. yeah so well, let's let's try it out you do let's the honors but yeah you got you beat total wine in, at an every price point <laughs> uh, here you pour this no I'm nervous. Dude, why because it's so beautiful and and awkward Is that how much the, the Cascanis is too? Is that much? This, this is the same price as this Cascanis. Okay, I didn't know that. I didn't know the Cascanis was yeah, that. Yeah, that's how I do it. We saved the 11 well. for less. Yeah. Uh, the fact that this is so bougie is because of the fact of how small batch it is. They don't produce a lot of tequila. San Mateas, Casa San Mateas is where this is distilled and produced. And they have their basic tequila. They have a silver. They have, or should I say, they have a blanco, they have a reposado, which means rested. That's what that translates to. And it means uh, six to 11 months. Well, it used to be six to 11 months. They changed the category recently. It's a reposado now is three to 11 months. And añejo is 12, 12 months to 23 months. Once it reaches the two year mark, it's going to be an añejo, extra añejo. Uh, typically, an extra añejo starts at three. From what I've seen, I haven't seen a two year old in such a long time. Asunia Black Barrel is the only one that I know of right now. And that's actually another one that I would recommend to bourbon drinkers. Asunia Black Barrel, two year. That's an amazing one. Just didn't have it at the moment. Um, but Casa San Mateas makes this and they make a 10 year old that's 90 proof. I wish I had that one. I just drank it too fast. I honestly, I, I, you were talking and I was so excited. I went right in for a tasting. You're good, man. But you the nose the is, um, once again, we're going back to that buttercream thing. We tasted off the first couple that we that we had. I can see why you said that. I get like dark chocolate, some plum. I get some oh, like- Oh, plum, I could totally get that. Yeah. I was gonna say there's some sort of stone fruit thing. Yeah, I get plum. I was gonna say peach, but- There's, um, you may not be wrong. It's subjective, no? But even on the palate, those similar notes on the nose carry through. Yeah. There's some sort of nuttiness in this that I picked off in the nose and I, I, I can't remember what I called it because I, I did a, a you know what, this is going to sound nuts because I've never, I've like literally never smelled this on anything before, but, but I agree with you and I'm going pine nuts. Hmm? Yeah. I actually, when I, when we first tasted this, when it first came to Arizona, I wrote down the tasting notes in the, on the nose. So I wrote the nose notes and the tasting notes. Then I did a post about it. Yeah, man, this was going pretty crazy when it first landed in Arizona. Which is why I wanted to do the barrel pick. Because the barrel pick, the tenure, oh man, the tenure is just phenomenal. This is like, this is really tasty. So I can't imagine how much better it would be if you give it four more years. Just picking up more oak notes. And 90 and proof. And 90 proof, yeah, that's awesome. I appreciate that they the older stuff, they, they leave it a slightly higher proof. I, I like that. Do they put it in the barrel at 80 proof or do they proof it down after? No, they actually put it in the barrel at 80 proof. This is an extra Nieco. I have not had this one, but I know the brand very well. Fuente Seca. Uh, Reserva, this is an 11 year old. This is 41.7 ABV. Look at the color on this, okay? Yeah, it's pretty clear. For 11, 11 years old, okay? Years old. So Enrique Fonseca is the master distiller. He does some really amazing stuff. Sorry. This is uh, this is the one I, I one of the ones I've been excited for. I've been saving it for for so uh, for something like this. I've had quite a few stuff from Fuente Seca. I just haven't gotten past the eight year. They have a twenty one and a twenty five year old, if I'm not mistaken. Crazy. Uh, they get very expensive. Um, they actually cost more than Peppy actually cost me. So it's just crazy. Black pepper. Um, oh, this is fruity. And fruity. Fruity. But I, I immediately get back black pepper and then it immediately yeah, goes to the fruit. I left the black you pepper out because same time yeah, we did. The eight year old does not smell anything like this. Oh, mm. it's that's pretty good. Buttercream. I get I get buttercream again. I'd swear I'm not I'm not a guy hammering one nail here. There's multiple nails on the board, but buttercream. So it's good. 
To me, it's very light. Very light. There's, there's age on this. There's age on this. Nose is amazing. I will. I, will I think this is the, the best nose. The palette gave me a nice smile, and then the zero finish gave me a little bit of a. That see, and I was, I got zero the finish. I got the zero finish immediately. That's why I was like, Neh. and you had this like I had this unicorns and my, butterflies. I had this big smile on my face, and then I swallowed, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. Um, I'll say it's the best nose. The best nose of any of them. Of any of these, and, and maybe, the best nose. Honestly, I would even argue maybe one of the better initial palettes, but it just unfortunately falls flat. I don't know. It's, this one to me still. This has been the top 10 tequilas for bourbon fans. Get out and try some tequila. I promise you'll find some stuff out there. It's like I tell everybody. There's a beer, there's a spirit, there's a wine for everybody. Doesn't matter what it is you like to drink. You just, you don't know until you try it. And once you try it, once you try many things, you'll expand your horizons and you'll be like, I did not know I liked this. Happened to me. Thanks for joining me, buddy. Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, if you're in Tucson, Arizona, hit up Nana's Kitchen. Uh, great place for tequila, great place for bourbon, great place, the best Mexican food in Arizona. Um, and yes, I've tried them all. I've tried them all. Nana's has the best Mexican food.